Today on Larry King Now, the Emmy Award-winning actor William H. Macy on his character Frank Gallagher. A drinking, alcoholic, drug-addicted, narcissistic, <laughs> swell guy. <laughs> I couldn't be over the top in this show if I tried. <laughs> On directing. It's less about making art and more about generalship. It's, it was as far out of my wheelhouse as I've stepped and uh, the discomfort was glorious for me. Plus, if you, if you were a wrestler, what would your name be? That's a good one. Rusty Overstreet. <laughs> All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Our guest is one of my favorite people, William H. Macy, the Oscar and Golden Globe nominated SAG and Emmy Award winning actor known for his roles in such films as Fargo and Boogie Nights and The Sessions, currently filming his fifth season as Frank Great Guy Gallagher <laughs> in the Showtime hit Shameless, where he's been nominated for an Emmy for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Comedy Series, and he makes his directorial debut in Rudderless, that's in theaters this October. We're going to talk about that in a while. Congratulations on the Emmy nomination. You've won, what, two, right? I did. Yeah. I did for a film that Stephen Schachter and I wrote. I got one for writing it and one for acting in it. And it was called Door to Door. Sweet film. I remember. Yeah, very nice. Explain Frank Gallagher. Explain. Well, I'm keeping that good guy, Frank Gallagher. I'm going to all Frank good guy Gallagher. It <laughs> alliterates and everything. How did that come about for you? Um, it's a British series uh, uh, brought over here by John Wells, and uh, I got the call from John, read the script, thought about it for about 14 seconds, and called him up and said, yeah, I'll do anything. To because? It was a great script. Um, uh, I'm not being completely honest. I did watch some of the British first season. It's outrageous. It's great. It's, it hits all the marks. It's at its core. It's about a family that loves each other ferociously and will do anything for each other. And then uh, everything else is trying to make it fly apart at the seams, in, uh, seams including the father, Frank, who is uh, a drinking, alcoholic, drug-addicted, narcissistic, <laughs> swell guy. <laughs> well, when you get that and you see a part like that, do you ever say, why me? Do you think I fit this? In other words, you see me as this. Always. It's the actor's lot. Um, <laughs> you read something and you think, seriously, this is what you think of me? Um, <laughs> but this one, uh, oh, Lord, it's a license to kill. I, there's no wrong. I couldn't be over the top in this show if I tried. <laughs> That's right. You can't underplay it. Oh, yeah. my Lord. Here's a clip from... <laughs> Is, did you ever get a script, I think this is too much? Did, did. you ever say, yeah? I did once. I and said, did they listen to you? Yeah, they, didn't, they had no choice. I mean, it was so beyond the pale that I said, <laughs> oh, please. But basically, I said, it's too, I would love to keep the audience on my side, or a little bit on my side, for a bit longer. Can we do this in the last season? <laughs> Is television more risky now, it seems with the HBOs and the Showtimes and the like, that anything goes? Vampires and I think we're in a second, a second golden age of television. I, don't, I think somebody was bemoaning the independent films and how it seems like there are not as many great scripts and great independent films coming out anymore. And the reason is, with the explosion of... The networks, uh, there's so many places they need so much product, everybody's gone to television. And I think some of the best work being done anywhere is being done on television. Writing, acting, directing, storytelling. Yeah, it's that, that's a very good way to put it. It is. It's uh, second astounding. Age. You, in the fifth season now, you're going to direct, have you directed it yet? I'm about to. Episode seven, we're on four. I'm nervous. It's well, you got to, I'll talk about the movie in the next segment, but why are you nervous? It's quick. Um, we'll shoot eight, ten pages a day without blinking, um, which is a lot. I mean, just for reference, a big feature film shoots a quarter of a page on a big stunt, page and a quarter, maybe page and a half. We'll shoot ten pages. 
so it's run and gun because of the nature of television. Uh, you get the script a week before, uh, you, so you've got a week of prep. You shoot it for a week. You've got a week to put your uh, your cut together. It's really fast. It's uh, so. How does it come out so well? I'm a, Peter Falk told me once when he did Columbo, the one thing he didn't like about television was it wasn't so much as get it right as get it done. Mm -hmm. You knew you had ten days. Doesn't that put a lot of pressure, one, pressure, and two, hard to make it terrific if you got a time limit? It does. But you know what? I don't think there's ever been a film where the director said, I have more time than I need. I don't care what the budget is. You're always rushing, whether the budget's uh, a million or a hundred million. And there's something to be said for going with your first impulse. I think a lot of times big, fat features uh, think themselves into a coma. They just keep fixing it until it sucks. Um, television is your first impulse, and I've always thought the, the purpose of technique is to get to your subconscious, and the, the faster that can go, the better. And um, Also, technologically, they've come a long way. We always have two cameras running. They can shoot in a coal mine with no lights. I mean, it's really fast, so it's all about the acting. Do you think Shameless would be a hit? I did. I did. You did. So, were you, are you, have you been good in your life at forecasting how things will do? Pretty good. Yeah? Why did you think Shameless would make it? It all starts with the writing. If the writing's good... It's got to be on the page, right? It's got to be on the page. If it's a great script, it's yours to screw up. If you don't screw it up, it's going to be a great show. It was great writing. I think the story could go anywhere. It was a British series. It fits uh, a family from Chicago perfectly. You could do it in Spain, you could do it in Russia. All in the Family was a British series. Family. Was a British series. Mm -hmm. More on William H. Macy, the director, after this. I like the way that sounds. Shameless is in its fifth season. William H. Macy is his star. He's got an Emmy nomination. He's a great actor. We go back to Fargo. We'll talk about that later because that, that impacting movie was incredible. Dari, right, tell me about uh, Rudderless. You're the director, your first feature directing, right? What has it been right. like? What's it about? What was it like for you? Um, it stars Billy Crudup and Anton Yelchin, and Fishburne's in it, and Felicity's in it, and uh, Oh, your Selena wife? You directed Rezzi's your in. wife? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's about a father, Billy, who loses his son in gun violence, and it uh, sends him into a spiral. And through the machinations of the plot, he ends up playing his son's music and then forms a band, and uh, his redemption comes through the music. So it had things that are near and dear to me. Uh, music is big in my life. I'm no good, but I do like it. <laughs> and it, it's a profound story. It might be controversial. And uh, Controversial how? The gun question? There's a twist. Oh. And um, uh, it just it had everything that I was looking for. And uh, then I made, met Keith Carville on another film, and he said, I can put this together in a nanosecond. So after two years of trying to get it together, I was suddenly behind schedule. He did put it together, and off right. we will. Did you use the talents of others that directed you in directing? I'm sure I did. Directly, Dave Mamet and Stephen Schachter are the biggest influences. I've worked with them the most. Um, I knew... Uh, mostly from Mr. Schachter, that it's less about making art and more about generalship. It's more like storming the beaches of Normandy than making art. Um, yeah, it's Eisenhower. Yeah. It's, it was as far out of my wheelhouse as I've stepped, and um, the discomfort was glorious for me. I walked away from the experience. I fell in love with this business all over again. It gave me a new lease on what I do, and uh, uh, at my age, to do something that shook me up so much. It was, it's, it's a stunning amount of work. Theater's the actor's medium, right? Once the curtain opens, the director can't do anything. But film is the director's, it's your baby, right? Totally. I think did that's why I wanted to do it. Did yeah. you enjoy the control factor of yes, it? Yes, totally. Um, interestingly, as an actor, I love giving away control. I love when, when I'm out there without a net and I don't know where the scene's going to go, I enjoy that feeling. But 
uh, I've been writing a good bit in the last couple of years, and other people direct it. And I wanted to tell the joke myself. And if the joke falls flat, it would be my fault. But if it's funny, it would be, be to my credit. Every actor knows this. I mean, you shoot the scene, and then you see the shot that the director chose, and you say, seriously? That's the scene? That's the one you, you chose? Or you have some stunning moment, and it's, uh, it's a wide shot, and you're this big in the frame. Um, but, you know, it's, you're right. It's a director's medium, so I wanted to drive Were you good with the actors? You have to ask them. I know they don't... Yeah, I think so. I didn't direct them much. There's no time. You better get a good cast. If you got to sit down and start talking about through line and stuff like that, you're screwed. Uh, it's all you can do to get it in the can. So you don't have to sit down and say, this is what motivates you? No, I have an M.O. I, I, I think it's all about the objective, and I would state the objectives pretty clearly. Um, you asked about uh, taking from other directors. I think uh, there is, a, f there is a, a line to be walked where you accept um, ideas from everyone, but then I think a good director at a point cuts off the discussion and makes the decision and on you go. You'll never have a longer day in your life than when the director believes in democracy. <laughs> You'll just be there until the wee hours. You got to direct another movie, right? God willing, yeah. It's called Crystal. We'll start shooting February 15th. What about directing your wife? Oh, it was a joy. There are all kinds of different actors, and she's a lot. She takes up a lot of space and a lot of air. She's really smart, and she comes in. She's a thoroughbred, and uh, it's a lovely thing to see. Do you bring the job home? We grew up in the theater together, so it's really one of the cornerstones of our relationship. We talk about acting all the time. We both love it. And we do talk about what we're doing. We give each other notes. I don't re recommend that you try this at home, kids, but hmm. um, we talk about stuff, and we've successfully made it so that it's rare that we hurt our, each other's feelings. Why do you love it? I fancy myself a raconteur. I've always... The part of acting that I love is that I'm... The actor's purview is so small, you live in a nanosecond. You look at me and ask a question, I say yes or I say no, and in that second is the whole thing. When you finish that moment, you go to the next. You don't think about the next one, you don't think about the last one. You live totally in the moment, and I find that a lovely experience. It's really great on stage. The film, everything is pulling at you, but um, I love living in the moment. I, I found that, uh, strangely, I'm most comfortable there. We'll talk about the great David Mamet right after this. We're back with uh, William H. Macy, a great actor, director. He's, he's going to direct a, a shameless episode coming in the fifth season. His movie uh, directorial debut will be in Rudderless coming in October. He's going to do another film next year as well. Okay, let's talk about Mr. Mamet. Okay. Where did you first meet him? I met him in college, Goddard College. He had graduated. He came back as what they called a teaching fellow. It was a hippie school up in Vermont. Uh, hmm. There were no requirements other than tuition. No grades, no tests. We were jolly well on our own. So Dave, being the dynamo that he is, put together this group of people, many of whom are still my friends. And uh, we played theater on our parents' dime for about three years. He taught what, me everything I know. What is his genius? Well, as a writer, he's a musician. He found the music in American speech, I think, better than anybody else. Um, we like to think of him as being profane, but um, it's beautiful music. And uh, it's so good that when you get two people who have done a mammoth play, particularly something like American Buffalo, you meet another guy that played teach, and you'll start riffing the lines. It's almost like singing. The words he chooses, the rhythm of it, it literally gives you pleasure the way your favorite pop song does. Glenn Gary. Glenn Gary. What a play. What a play. He's prescient. I don't know why. I don't know where he gets it. He's a rootin' tootin' genius. I mean, his plays wag the dog. He's ahead of us. He, he's fearless. He will say the thing that can't be said. He's done it his whole career. And he's funny. 
funny as all get out. When you're doing a play with that, people have said that about Tennessee Williams, that they write and that it flows, that mm -hmm. actors love to it's speak. You feel it when you say the lines, mm -hmm. right? It must be fun to do. It's great. Hard to memorize, but um, once you get it, it's, it's like driving a Ferrari. It is just glorious. Tell me about Fargo, how that came about. Uh, the normal ways, uh, uh, I got it from my agent at the time. I think it was with writers and artists at that point. I read the script. Uh, it frightened me because I realized I was born to play the role, even though it was described much differently than how I look. Um, it was a great script, and the Coen brothers were doing it, so I was terrified. I went in to read for the cop. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And Ethan said, that's real good. You want to read Jerry? And I said, yeah. So I went out in the hall, worked on the speech. They said, that's real good. <laughs> you want to come in tomorrow? I said, yeah. I was up all night, called every actor I knew. I was off book in the entire thing. I went in, they went, that's real good. Thanks. And then I found out they were uh, holding auditions in New York. So I got my Lutheran ass on an airplane, flew to New York, walked in again. And I said, uh, you give this role to someone else, I'll shoot your dog. <laughs> I did say that, because Ethan had just gotten a dog. <laughs> it's a great movie. It's a great film. What, it was so special. You know, it had a quality. It did. It hung, you, you, you trapped it as she was terrific, you were terrific. It was just... I don't think, they, it, they chose Minnesota, which is a very specific type of people, good people stalwart, honest, the best of America. I mean, the hardworking and a little bit of the pioneer spirit there. And to tell a, a, a venal crime story in that setting was very novel. And that score and the acting is fantastic. And um, Joel's camera work, I mean, that man can move a camera around. It's just flawless. By the way, you, uh, you're into music. You say you play the ukulele? Mm -hmm. Why the ukulele? You pull it out of the case and people laugh. So yeah, you're right. halfway home. No one's expecting anything. If you can get any music out of it, it's a poor it's man's little... guitar, right? Yeah, and it's a different sound. I don't go anywhere. I didn't realize it, but my wife said, you self-soothe with that, don't you? Hmm. And I realized when I'm uptight, I pull out the uke and it comes. You say you're really into music without being good at it, right? Yeah. So by into it, you mean what, you're a fan? I just play music all the time. We have a piano at home. I took piano lessons. That's a sobering experience for a 50-year-old guy to try to learn piano. My daughters are always singing. Felicity sings. There's lots of guitars and ukuleles around the house. We sing a lot. Who had a great effect on you musically? My brother, Fred, taught me how to play. And I grew up in the golden age of rock and roll. Um, and you when we... Post-Sinatra. Post Post-Sinatra. I love Frank Sinatra, though. Hey. Oh. And he sounds really good on a ukulele. All of those tunes sound great <laughs> on a uke. Um, in Rudderless, there are six pop songs, six songs, and I realized they sort of, they are the dead son. So they're a big character in the film, and I realized that was the first decision I had to make. And I did pretty good. They're great songs. Who sings them? Um, the two fellows who wrote most, uh, the, our cast sings them, but two guys wrote them, uh, uh, Charlton Pettis and Simon Stedman. Uh, they sing on screen? Uh, yeah, Billy sings, Anton oh. sings, uh, Selena sings a little bit, uh, you hear her, who else? Uh, the other, oh, yeah, the whole band. Wow, looking forward to it, rudderless. Oh, it's great. Working with the late Philip Seymour Hoffman when we return. We're back with William H. Macy. We'll have some social media questions, but what did you, you work with Philip Seymour Hoffman and what? Uh, two Paul Thomas Anderson films, uh, uh, Boogie Nights and Magnolia. Maybe some other one, too. What was he? Everyone who I talked to about him, just his talent was enormous. Enormous. He might have been the best of us. Um, it, I think we know now that it came from a good amount of pain, 
Mm. I mocked him once. We were doing a panel, and uh, Phil was one of those guys that really subsumed himself in the character and what the character's shoes look like and what was in his pockets. And I said, uh, does that nonsense really help you? And uh, he said, yeah, it does. And then he countered, I think you do a little bit more of it than you'll admit to, don't you, Bill? <laughs> hmm. uh, great guy. What a tragedy. It's hard not to be mad at him. We have some social media questions. Bryson Knox on Facebook. If you could change anything in your career, what would it be? Hmm. All right, I'll ask you this way. You ever turned down a role you regretted? No. Miss some. Miss some that I wish I'd gotten. Like? Oh, you know, I remember the ones in New York. I did some plays in New York, and um, I was just a work-a-day actor, so I had to duke it out to get them. Umpi Yumi Schumar. Some people on Facebook have weird names. What was your greatest challenge in becoming an actor? Mm. I think it's your, it's, it's a hard knocks sort of way to make a living. I, I, I would say the rejection. You know, I paid for my habit. I did a lot of plays in New York and Chicago and I paid for them by doing commercials. I did a lot of voiceovers, but I did a lot of on camera. And everybody would call me, and they loved to have me audition for their commercials. And they never cast me. So I would do three commercial auditions a day sometimes. I just got enough to keep going. But it was, I think I once went 60 auditions without getting one. <sighs> the Hudson River on Instagram. What's the favorite movie you've appeared in? That's like naming your favorite kid. Yeah, can't. But I, I love State and Maine, Happy Texas, hmm. mm, Fargo, of course. SE8N1 on Instagram. Did you watch and take anything from the English Frank Gallagher? I did. I did. Sort of the style of the piece a little bit, although they're English. You need subtitles to understand them. Oh, brief, <laughs> briefly, I met um, uh, David Th Threldfeld, who plays Frank. He was over here. He came to the set. I'd never met him. I saw him in the distance. I was worried he would get lost. He, he doesn't know L.A. We saw each other from a distance. We started walking towards each other. It sounds like a cliche. We ran the last couple of paces, and I embraced him like a long-lost brother for a long time for guys. For a minute, we just held on to each other. It was one of the most stunning wow. things. Bradley Sawyer on Facebook. Who was some of your favorite directors? Well, we've already mentioned Mamet. And the Coen brothers, of course, and... Uh, Did they direct together? They sort of tag-team it. Um, I think if you had to... I, I think Joel uh, sets the shots a little more, and Ethan writes the scripts a little more, but they both do both. And now a game of If You Only Knew. We'll just throw questions at you. All Remember right. the first girl you kissed? Becky Borgman. Becky Borgman. Where was this? Um, what city? In, it was in Cumberland, Maryland. I think it was in her living room. I think her parents were upstairs, and boy, I laid one on her. How old were you, William? Uh, Fourteen. Superman or Batman? Superman. Fly. What's a superpower you'd like to have? Invisibility. Me too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's better than flying. Oh. Flying? Come on. We fly all the time. It's boring. <laughs> Instrument you'd like to learn how to play? Mm, violin. Karaoke song. Some Eagles tune. Take it to the limit. You have a favorite film hero? Actor or hero? The favorite hero? Maybe. Maybe Jimmy Stewart in one of those. Uh, oh. Any, any Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> Rolling Stones or Led Zeppelin? Boy, that's tough. <laughs> Stones. Long haired or short haired Frank Gallagher? I like the long hair. Which era would you like to go back and visit? I think I'd go back to Gettysburg. I'd like to meet Lincoln. I'd like to be around for the Civil War. Favorite playwright? Mammon. Role you'd love to play? Hamlet, but that ain't gonna happen. Well, I'll, I'll take Lear then. It's on Broadway now on in Central Park with John Lithgow. Oh, damn. I'm, no, I'm too young anyway. Yeah, you John's are. John's much older than I am. I'll wait until uh, 
I'm his age. How about Death of a Salesman? Yeah, yeah, no? yeah. It's too depressive. Uh, you like Hamlet or Macbeth? You can't say that in here. <laughs> what would your That's wrestling... you over. you got to go outside and spit three times and come back in. If you, if you were a wrestler, what would your name be? That's a good one. <laughs> well, you take your pet, I think. Uh, 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 Rusty Overstreet. <laughs> Time travel or space travel? Time travel. Yeah, me too. I don't want to go up. You want to go up to the moon? No. No, I've been to Encino. Why would you want to go to the moon? What acting performance affected you a lot as a kid? Or was, this, was there a movie or a theater play that that encouraged you even more to say, I want to do that? Um, we talked about Cassavetes. I saw Husbands one time. That oh. sort of blew my mind. Any one of the characters? Any one of the three? Uh, mostly Cassavetes and the film, his, uh, him as a director. It was so sloppy. It was so free-ranging. I thought, you can do that? And then I saw Gene Hackman, be still my heart. I, uh, Gene Hackman is my hero. In uh, French Connection, I thought, oh, if I could ever act like that. Great guy. Mm. He's writing books now in Santa Fe. Oh, good for him. Never got thank to act with him. Thank you, William. Thank you, brother. William H. Macy. want to thank him, the Emmy winner and current nominee for Shameless on Television. And we wish him good luck when they announce the Emmys. We hope he wins it. And his directorial debut is in Rudderless in theaters this October. The fifth season of Showtime's Shameless airs in 2015. And remember, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things, and I'll see you next time.